Welcome back to Module 5. In this video, we're going to be covering using value and hue to create light. What we're going to be looking at today is specifically, first, how to use contrast in value and hue to create the light, and secondly, how to mix light and dark values that hold their intensity. In other words, how to use optical or perceptual color instead of local color to create that contrast in value. So remember that to create a strong hard light, you're going to use high contrast. And to create a sense of soft diffused light, you're going to use a lower contrast in value and hue. In this photograph uh, that we looked at in the last video, you can see that warm, strong light falling on the building. So it has a strong, hard light. And you can see revealed in the photograph how high the contrast is in value on that building. Looking at it a little closer, you can see in those highlight areas how light it is in contrast to the darkness of the shadow. That's what gives it that strong sense of illumination. When we pull out those color spots, that contrast in value becomes even more evident. Look at those first two color spots where you have the lightest light and the darkest dark on the building, and you can see what a strong contrast in value it is. It's not between a number one, which is white, and a number nine, which is black but it's fairly close to like a contrast of two, a value 2 to a value 7 or 8. So very strong contrast in value. That becomes even clearer if we pull out all the color and just look at that photograph in black and white. You can see what a strong difference there is between the light part of the building where the sunlight is hitting it and the shadowed area of the building. Now let's look at a soft diffused light. Remember it's going to be created through a lower contrast in value and hue. So looking at this photograph, you can tell that we have no direct strong sunlight. It is a very misty, very low light condition. It's early morning, very, very cloudy sky. So without a lot of strong sunlight, when those color spots are pulled out, you can see very quickly how low the contrast is in the land itself. That the marsh is dark, but the lighter part of the tree line is, that it appears lighter, is still fairly dark in middle value. So the contrast is more like a value 5 to a value 6 or 7 dramatically lower than in the photograph of the building. When we pull the color information out, the very narrow range of values in that landscape become even more evident. Look at how little difference there is between the tree line in the background and the marsh that is moving towards the middle ground. The values are almost exactly the same. There's a slight difference in hue, but the values are very close to being the same ones. So we're going to be looking at specifically, again, at contrast between uh, high contrast, creating strong light, and low contrast, creating soft light. And we're going to look at how that translates using optical color. Remember that local color is when you take the physical color of the object and you only use black to darken it and white to lighten it. So many people rely on using very limited tints and shades of a color in order to create that sense of light. When you do that, it is going to look washed out and chalky. So look at the painting on the left and look at the painting on the right. Which one creates the stronger sense of illumination? And it's the one on the right. You can get something of a sense of illumination in that one on the left, but it's not nearly as rich or nearly as strong as the painting on the right. So we want to avoid using white 
as a lightener. Now, you're not going to be able to avoid using white altogether, nor should you. You need white to mix with the blues of the sky. You need white to add to some of the tint colors in order to actually make them more, uh, the transparent tinting colors, in order to make them more vibrant. But you do not want to use white as your go-to color to lighten everything else. It will lead to that sort of flat, chalky look that you see in the painting on the left. So the question then becomes how to employ optical color. How do you mix light and dark values if you're going to avoid using white and black to do that? So let's go back for just a second and look at that photograph again. Here's that building. So in order to create the colors that we're going to mix the colors that we're going to use for painting this building, we're going to look at our color wheel and we're going to identify which color is the closest to the physical color of the object. And that's the warm red that we see up towards the top of the color wheel. If you're using the Williamsburg colors, that is Fanchon red. If you're using a different brand, it's the Naphthal red that I recommended you get. That red is roughly the color of the brick when it is in standard light, not strong illumination and not diffused illumination. It's the physical color of the object. To you create a lighter value that we're going to use to show strong illumination, we want to go at least two colors over on the color wheel. So going two colors over to a lighter color, a color that's inherently lighter, we'd go to orange. So a question that I get a lot is, how do I avoid using white to lighten my colors without changing the hues? And the answer is, you will change the hues. You have to change the hues because the light falling across the subject is changing your perception of the hue. So your painting needs to reflect that. So the lighter color that I would recommend for painting that building would be the orange for the sense of illumination. And for the shadow, I would go two over to red violet or even to violet. So when you look at those colors next to each other, this is the combination that you get. You have orange over to the left, our warm red in the middle, and red violet on the right. So yes, these are inherently different hues, but they share a common color. There is red as part of the mixing of all three of those colors. So they have a strong relationship. And your eye will read the lighter illuminated part of the building that is created through using orange as being light and the red violet as being shadow. If you want to create an even stronger sense of illumination, you can go even a little bit further out as far as separating those colors on the color wheel. These are actually three colors apart. So here at the bottom, you have yellow orange, warm red, and violet. That makes a dramatic and very stark, strong contrast in hue and value. So that would create a very, very strong sense of illumination. For diffused light, like we saw in that photograph of the early morning, rainy morning over the marsh, then we're going to get colors that are closer together. So we have blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, uh, phthalo blue, green shade, and blue-green. Those colors literally sit almost exactly next to each other on the color wheel. And because of that, the contrast is going to be dramatically lower. When you use that lower contrast, it's going to create the illusion that there is diffused 
light. So let's go back over that really quickly. Remember that to create a strong sense of light or to create illumination, you want to use contrast in value and hue. And if you want to create the strongest sense of light, the greatest illusion of light, then you're going to want to use optical versus local color. And you're going to want to mix your light and dark colors by going to the color wheel and choosing colors that are inherently lighter for the light colors and inherently darker for the dark colors. Do not add white to lighten your colors to mix a lighter value for the painting. Do not add black to mix a darker value for the painting. So avoid the local color and move to using the optical color and you'll see a dramatic difference in the way that your paintings look. I hope this has been helpful and wish you all happy painting as you dive into using value and hue to create a strong sense of color and light. Bye-bye for now.